Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through the Ben's Force offering surrounding the HE200 series whole set turbos. Uh, to begin with, we offer four different models. So one is the HE200, one is the HE221 5.5 centimeter turbine housing. There's this one, which is the HE221 uh, with a 7 centimeter housing. And our latest uh, turbo is on its way. It is the HE250 with a 10 centimeter squared housing. And that should uh, hopefully replace the HY35 demands that or requests that we're getting. Uh, something between the HX35 and the 7 centimeter squared for those uh, OM6OX users, the, the 603s and um, even the 602 and 606 users. So the difference here is uh, the 200 actually has a wastegate that is. Uh, integrated or or accommodated by the turbine housing that's a little bit different than the 221s um, regardless of application you people will need a way to adapt an exhaust so we have our 79 millimeter v-bands this works on every turbo that we have manufactured it still has machining oil on it so the idea is you simply we match the profile of the uh, the whole set v-band and we made it a little bit oversized. I believe it's about a 16th oversize. And the reason for that is most of our customers are doing a swap. It's not a, a ground up install. So we made it, uh, if you have scale on the pipe or it's dinged up or something, it'll still slip in here with just enough play. Um, and then of course you could just make a bead around it and uh, be done with it. So the HE 200 series does not come with a back plate. So th these turbos have a five bolt back plate. Cummins does have kind of a universal, if you will, uh, four bolt plate. And really this will work fine in almost every application. But our, our uh, customers were demanding a five bolt plate. So we had cast iron plates made with this fifth bolt here. And uh, that has been actually a very good offering. What's different about this is that we tried to match um, as closely as possible the factory uh, recess there. So it's not like an, an eBay piece of flat stock with a V-band welded. Uh, we're trying to allow the, the airflow to go as it normally would in a factory type application without, without restriction. Next we have uh, on the 221s here, you'll notice that we have this wastegate adapter. Now the reason we came up with this is because on these turbos, the wastegate is actually affixed to the compressor housing. You actually have to pull the core out of these turbos and take a clocking pin out to be able to rotate it as needed for your application. So in order to have a way to mount the wastegate, we have come up with this bracket that gets sandwiched between the, the manifold and the turbo. And then you simply pull the pin on the wastegate, turn it around, and then you can bolt it to this bracket. Now we did design this with the factory preload in mind. So there is um, some tension here. You have to pull it when you install it, but it, uh, it does match the, the factory install. Uh, also, these used to be an eighth of an inch, but we have just recently uh, updated this to a quarter of an inch. It is extremely stout now uh, with, with really no play in it. Okay, so coming in, uh, we, we've gone through the, the hot side for the most part, except the manifold. Let's talk about the compressor side. And we have a couple different options here. One, we, we have a Photon cast aluminum piece. Now Photon is a joint venture uh, with Cummins. So this is, a, uh, for all practical purposes, a, a Cummins endorsed part. And uh, we just, we buy those with, with the turbos uh, to facilitate the install. But then we also have our own proprietary straight fittings uh, that, are, that are machined to go to a two and a half inch coupler. So if you need to come straight out uh, in order to, to get around something in your engine bay on the way to an intercooler, for example, then this might be a more appropriate choice for your application. Both of these kits, whether it's an elbow or a straight fitting, they come with a clamp and the appropriate O-ring. Now on the manifold side, to actually get this thing to spool, we have a couple different offerings. One is around the 606. Um, it has a triangular uh, KKK flange, and um, we 
have made that adapt to this T25. So you'll see we have a T25 opening here. We have the KKK opening here. Um, it's a very stout piece, made in the USA, very heavy, and um, it's just a, a quality piece of, of steel here. And on the 617 side, uh, it took a little bit more magic, and that is a T3 flange, which goes to a T25. So the OM617, it has studs on it, so those need to be pulled, and then we have cap screws that get installed and recessed here. Now, there are different kinds of adapters on the market right now. Some will just be a cast piece uh, that's extended out. Those can present clearance problems because there's too much distance between the manifold and the turbo because you have to get the bolts and or nuts um, in there uh, for the turbo as well as the manifold. So there's a lot of distance to cover. I didn't like that. I just felt that uh, not only was the quality not there on those pieces, but uh, again, the, the size uh, presented an issue. Other adapters we saw actually required studs on the T3 side, which won't work because on the uh, 617 manifolds, you have threaded holes, so they have to be bolts. Right? You have to screw something into the manifold. It doesn't pass through the manifold to get nuts. So you, you would have to drill out the manifold, and I didn't like that solution. The other uh, type of adapter we saw on the market actually had the T25 offset to the side of the T3. So if, if this is the top of the 60, or 617 and we look at the exhaust manifold, you'll actually see that the exhaust gas comes down at an angle and that is closely, not perfect, but closely represented to the angle here. So rather than coming out and then taking a hard turn, uh, we kind of continued on that path. And by doing so, it actually allowed the offset uh, to accommodate the seal that is on each turbo gasket. Right. So the bead on the actual metal gasket for the turbo um, flanges uh, is not compromised in any way. So uh, we should not have any leaks around here. And again, that's a little bit different than some of the other, other adapters we've seen. Some of them have uh, recessed holes in uh, the transition piece, which means now that oh, through heat, cy heat cycling, it could degrade the lifespan of this adapter. And none of those worked for us. So that's why we've, we've come up with this design and uh, it's simple, but still we're very proud of it, and I think it is the best solution. Okay, so I guess all that's left really is oiling. So the oil inlet is a, a M10 in feed fitting on the turbo. I do have 4AN to M10 fittings. But, but people need to be aware of the engine pressure. So... Typically speaking, the whole sets have a threshold of about 72 PSI. Uh, engines like the OM617 can put out as much as 7 bar of pressure. That's over 100 PSI. So uh, sustained high pressure like that will definitely cause failure in these turbos. Um, so whether you use a restrictor, you use a regulator, uh, or maybe your application doesn't put out that kind of pressure, so you need nothing. Um, you need to be aware of your application and choose the feed appropriately. Now for the drain size, whether it's a T25 chassis like these or a T3 chassis, I have standardized uh, on the 12AN fittings, and uh, this happens to be the T25 12AN fitting that I've had manufactured. And if we roll it over here and look, the reason I went with extended fittings is because of the clearance concerns here on the compressor housing. So if I went with a recessed fitting or one that was flush mount here with the flange, first of all, I don't know if that diameter would fit. 12AN is a little bit overkill for the, uh, for the 220, 221 or the 200 series in general, but standardizing across all the engine platforms and the turbo models to the largest size, uh, I think was the, the best route to success and prolonged life of the turbo. So we have these 12AN fittings. And likewise, on the block or pan size, we have a uh, 606, and this should work on a 602 or 603 as well. 
um, we've we've mirrored the I guess geometry if you want to call it that on the stock fitting and what what's different uh, if, if you just have a fitting screwed into a bung or a bung welded on flat bar like I, I've run for quite some time and then you have a 12 an fitting it's not as smooth of a of a drain transition so with this fitting not only do you eliminate the cost of a you know a bung a fitting and then an an fitting um, you really have one part and uh, a, a better flow on the 617 side um, we've also matched the mercedes part to fit into the rubber grommet that goes into the pan and again uh, just a 12 an fitting it's standard across all of our whole set drains at this time so there you have it. This is our whole set HE200 series offering. Uh, I'll do a similar video for the T3 side, which would be the HX35, the 351. And uh, we actually have uh, an HE400 on the way that we're going to look into. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I will have links to all these products down below in the description. Thanks for watching.